Recently, I refinished an old dining room table that I inherited from my childhood family. And it has extension leaves that you can place in it to extend the table close to 12 feet long. And I've calculated that I've eaten at least 20,000 meals on that table. It holds many memories of different feasts, including the many international guests that gathered there invited by my parents when I was a child. I remember as a young boy sitting at the table enthralled by the different languages, dress, and customs represented there in my small corner of the world. A whole different world was opened up to me as we feasted on our Pennsylvania Dutch staples of mashed potatoes, green beans, and meatloaf. This expansive table has become a metaphor to me of asking how we might expand our tables as a church community to include more of God's beloved world. What are the new leaves that we need to place in our table as a church community to welcome those from the highways and byways, the hedgerows, those near and far? On this World Communion Sunday, we celebrate the ways in which we, as a Parkview community, have extensive ties and relationships with our global community. Many of us have been shaped in significant ways in our faith journeys through our global connections, whether we have served and worked abroad or whether we relate to the international immigrant community here in, this, in the valley. When the political rhetoric of our time denigrates and criminalizes the foreigner and the immigrant, we need to pr clearly proclaim as a church that we see our global community differently through the lens of the image of God in each and every person. As we gather for this feast, how can we advocate for our brothers and sisters in our global community? How can we shape our political system to seek the common good, where every man, woman, and child is free, according to the prophet Micah, to sit under their own vines and under their own fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid? The feast that God wants to prepare for us here today includes the foreigners, the immigrants, those who have little and those who have much. In our worship, we have sung the hymn Widen the Circle two times this past month. And in case you haven't noticed, the lyrics of the song are, are minimal and repetitive. But I think the beauty of the song is that it invites us to fill in the lyrics of what this means for us today. How are we being called to widen the circle, to lengthen the table, to fling open the doors, to bust a hole in the roof if we have to? How can we continue to expand our guest list of those gathered around our tables? One of the most enduring images for me of uh, the worldwide community, and I didn't notice it till this morning, my daughter pointed out on the bulletin here in the front is a sign of the Camino, uh, the yellow arrow with the, the shell, for me, this is a powerful image for me of the worldwide community, because on the Camino de Santiago, the trail that goes through Spain to, um, to Santiago, thousands upon thousands and thousands of pilgrims have traveled over the years, representing many different cultures and languages and peoples. And every evening, in those little towns along that trail, the pilgrims gather in homes around tables to share bread and wine and to share in the communion that they, they, they traveled that day along the trail. And it's a beautiful image of me, for me of the ecumenical community of God's beloved world. Throughout the Bible, there are over 52 references to feasting and 73 references to banquets. And of course, these stories are not just about eating and drinking and being merry. In Luke, the banquet isn't as much about getting an invitation to heaven in an age to come as it is about how we enact life with God in the here and now, the way that we are called to embrace the ever-expanding fellowship of God's people here on earth. Who do we bring with us in our hearts and our minds to the table today? To whom in our neighborhoods do we want to extend a welcome? Of course, this is not our table. This is God's table. 
And we know that God's table extends far beyond the limits of these walls. So how can we show up for each other at the various tables in our communities and our neighborhoods? The sobering reminder from our Luke story, as some of our uh, guests uh, elaborated here today, is that we have many excuses for not showing up at the feast. And if you remember the story, they uh, they have excuses about going and buying land, of buying oxen, or getting married. And these are everyday lives, uh, excuses, that, that represent our everyday lives as social and family engagements and economic activity. These are not the dog ate my homework kind of excuses. Perhaps this parable is a sobering reminder that we are often tempted to prioritize social and family and economic obligations over opportunities for deeper and more diverse relationships in God's economy of expanding grace. There is a graciousness in giving the invitation, and there is also a graciousness required in accepting the invitation. How can we continue to trust that God will provide us with what we need? How can we see that the provisions are already here, present among us as a community, all that we need, and much more? The beauty of Jesus' parables is that they meet us where we are. We might be the host. We might be the first invited, we might be the poor off the street, but wherever we find ourselves in the story, we can be sure of the good news. There is a party, and one way or another, we're all invited. So, let's crowd the tables, and let's get this party started. But before we do that, I want to uh, play a video of a song, it's one of my favorite songs, and I can see some of the SVCC uh, members cringing a little bit because it, it, uh, it stars them. Uh, I was first introduced to this song. It's by the, uh, the, the, the group, the Highway Women, called Crowded Table. And SVCC sang this a number of years ago during the COVID pandemic uh, when, when we could not gather around tables. And perhaps as a church community, we're still sorting out how we regather around tables. So I'll read uh, the lyrics here before we, we hear it sung. I want a house with a crowded table, a place by the fire for everyone. Let us take on the world while we're young and able and bring us back together when the day is done. If we want a garden, we're going to have to sow the seed, plant a little happiness, let the roots run deep. If it's love that we give, then it's love that we reap. The door is always open. Your picture is on my wall. Everyone's a little broken, and everyone belongs. <laughs> <laughs> 